talk about cochita pibil, it's one of these pillars of Mexican food. And it's pretty simple to do, be, to be very honest. So the traditional garnish with the cochita pibil are these pickled onions. I'm not going to do it necessarily with uh, chile habanero. We have our bay leaf. We have some salt, a little bit of sugar. So what I like to do is I like to start with all of my spices first. So I have here some salt, some sugar. I have some black pepper, fresh cracked pepper. I have some chili flakes. And in this case, I like to use chile habanero, I mean chili arbol. It's uh, sort of like a cayenne, if you will. Um, and I'm adding some of that. Some fresh bay leaves, hojas de laurel, beautiful. Right here I have some Mexican oregano. Okay, now Mexican oregano is very different from like the Italian Mediterranean oregano. It's more like a wild marjoram. All right, so I have my spices. I'm adding some vinegar, water. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna let this come up to a burl, as they say in Louisiana. We're going to let this come up to a burl. And then the idea here, guys, oh, and I have some clove, too. The idea here is you just want this to come up to a sever and dissolve. You don't want to cook this very much. And once that sort of has a chance to macerate, maybe three to, three to six hours, you have some wonderful pickled onions. So the primary flavor profile that we're going to use for this bibil is achote. So I'm going to add that here. And the traditional recipe calls for uh, jugo de naranja agria, or, or sour orange juice. Have you ever seen the Valencia oranges? But if you don't have Valencia... You could do equal portions of orange juice and lime juice. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to add that. I have some more Mexican oregano, my favorite. Some garlic, right? We're going to do a little bit of olive oil, not too much. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get some salt, a little bit of pepper, and then we're going to give this a puree, right? So right here what I have, I have some banana leaf, right? What I like to do with mine is when I get it, I like to toast it. And why I like to do that is it sort of makes it a little bit pliable, okay? And it allows it to sort of kind of bend easier. And not only that, but it gives like a little nutty flavor, which I think is cool. I lay a nice layer of the banana leaf on top, on the bottom, excuse me. And then what I'm going to do is take some sliced onion, okay? And I'm going to sort of do like a little bed of that on the bottom. And right here I have pork butt. So what I like to do here, anytime I season, and this goes for anything that you guys do, whether you cook chicken or you cook steak at home, whatever it is, always add a little bit of oil to the outside. So now I have some kosher salt. And I've actually trussed this, or you know, I've wrapped it with a little bit of string, and that's just to keep it uniform. Okay, a little bit of pepper. I have the roast. I'm gonna set it right on top of that. And then I have this achote recado. So then what I like to do is add another layer of that banana leaf, and then I'm just going to sort of enc encase this pork roast in there, right? Put another layer of those onions on top, excuse me. So what's going to happen here is the same principle goes for the bottom part. They're going to melt, get inside, and get all happy with the pork, and we're going to roast this. So we're going to cover this with some foil. You guys get the idea. We're going to put it inside, okay? We're going to put it inside the oven, 300 degrees maybe about three and a half hours, something like that. So let me give you guys what it looks like when it's done, all right? So imagine that time has elapsed, and then what you're left with is this idea of this pork. Now look, mira nada más que belleza. So what we're left here with, guys, are these really soft, look at that. Now tell me that ain't real. All day long. So then what I like to do is take some of that liquid, guys, because you will not sacrifice that. And then you can do a couple things here, guys. You can reduce this liquid a little bit, kind of skim off the fat if you like. And then that could be your sauce. We'll take a, we'll take a couple uh, spoonfuls of this sauce, put it right on top of all this wonderful pork, reduce it down a little bit. All right. 
We'll cover with some of that pickled onion on top like that. Does that not look fantastic or what? <laughs> wow, so we're going to do that? So the idea was cilantro. Use the stems. Don't ever sacrifice the stems, guys, because that's all the good stuff right there. And for me, when you have something like that, we're going to cook some tortilla, and we're going to have a pate. We've been